Hi, my name is Greg Penny. Um, I'm a producer, engineer, songwriter, um, musician. I'm here to talk to you today about uh, Dyn Audio Acoustic Air 6s and uh, how I use them. But first, I'll take you back to the beginning, sort of how I got here. Um, I am the product of uh, uh, a a uh, mother and father who were in the music business. My father was a Western swing band leader and my mother was a uh, very famous vocalist, uh, Sue Thompson and Hank Penny. Uh, they were very popular in the 50s and 60s. And uh, growing up as a kid, uh, attending their recording sessions, I was always fascinated with the engineers and the producers. And I thought the producer's job is the job to have because the artists, they, they make one record and then they got to go out on the road for months and months and months. If I'm a producer, I can stay in the studio and make records every day. So that's how I got into this. Um, I started uh, engineering local bands, um, producing young artists when I was 17, 18 years old. And I had the uh, lucky experience uh, as a great fan of Elton John's when I was 17 years old to attend the sessions for the Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album in France uh, in May of 1973. And uh, Gus Dudgeon, the producer of the album, and his engineer, David Henschel, both two, two lovely guys, uh, allowed me to sort of be a fly on the wall, ask plenty of questions, and, and learn a lot during that time. Um, so it really sort of cemented in me what I wanted to do, and I set about launching a career. I worked in the music business in LA for a while at Warner Brothers as an A&R guy and uh, Warner Music and then uh, went out on my own as a producer working with young bands in LA and trying to get LA and London and trying to get a, a, a foothold in the business and uh, one of the first bands that I produced that was successful was a band that um, uh, was formed by Bill Paxton and Andrew Todd called Martini Ranch and that, that was a record for Sire Records that I did. And that got me the uh, sort of the recognition of Warner Brothers Records um, who very soon after that asked me to work with a, 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 an artist that they had on the label who went by the name of Mark Anthony Thompson at that time and later he changed his public persona to Chocolate Genius. And I uh, did a very critically important album uh, with Mark at the time called Watson Paris, which was a great album. And uh, both those albums, the Martini Ranch album and the Watson Paris album, got me the attention of Katie Lang. And because my folks, being who they were, had uh, been successful in country music and pop music, and uh, I was of the mindset that sort of matched Katie's at the time, I was asked to begin working with her um, for an album which became uh, Absolute Torch and Twang. And that started a history that was uh, wonderful for me. Um, I produced, engineered, mixed, um, worked with Katie for several years, did Absolute Torch and Twang, uh, singles in between, and then the, her, her best-selling album, uh, Ingenue, which uh, produced the single Constant Craving. I also wrote with her for the Ingenue album and um, played some instruments on those records, did some beatbox programming and stuff like that. Um, that then led to uh, other jobs, mixing and producing jobs, one of them being Ricky Lee Jones, her uh, Flying Cowboys album. Um, I was asked to come and work on that album about midway through the tracking of the album because Walter Becker and her needed someone who could um, who had my talents, I suppose. So I came into that album and largely finished that record off, uh, moving on to do another album with Ricky called Pop Pop that was very successful. It was a jazz kind of album with Charlie Hayden and uh, um, other wonderful jazz musicians on the album. Um, I then did... Uh, uh, we had done Ingenue and I was uh, looking for my next job and uh, the phone rang and it was Elton John, my old friend, who asked me if I would produce a duet with him in KD. And that was uh, an offer I couldn't refuse. Uh, the results of that duet that we did, uh, which was called Teardrops, 
Um, was the Dalton that asked me to then continue working with him for several years after that. Um, and I still to this day work with Elton on many things. But uh, that was a, uh, a pretty packed period of intense Elton work, producing, mixing, engineering. Um, that I produced the album Made in England, uh, several tracks on the duets album with Elton and then went on to do live stuff um, and a variety of other things. Um, my, continue progressed, my career continued to progress on throughout the 90s and the 2000s uh, uh, by me doing records with Paul Young, um, a variety of other young artists, including my own band, Paparetta, which is uh, a band that I have with my wife, Katya. And uh, it's uh, primarily a, a project band. We had a successful record uh, in Europe and in Japan, uh, which was largely bossa nova and drum and bass oriented. And um, on that record, we wrote all the songs and I played all the instruments, engineer produced, etc., in our studio, which we are in now. Um, shortly after that, I approached Elton with the concept of doing uh, an album that I, this album that I had produced with him made in England in surround, uh, as was uh, the, I suppose the the movement at the time was to re repurpose those records for surround. Uh, he gladly said, "Go on, do it." You know, so I, I started the record and and midway through I did some playbacks and he asked me if I would stop Made in England and go on and do Goodbye Yellow Brick Road because Gus Dudgeon, the producer of the record, had passed on and he felt that I had a good handle on uh, how, to, how to proceed and really make that legendary record come to life as a surround record. So I began that record and uh, the results were very good and we got uh, some wonderful awards and some accolades for that record. And after him hearing that record, he basically said, go do the lot, do the bunch. So I took it upon myself to, to, to create a large Elton John project. It was to remix his classic albums, the first 12 Elton John albums in surround, and to um, basically secure a backup digital library of all those multi-track tapes and two-track tapes, as well as the newly created surround mixes. So that, uh, that was quite a task, and it took a couple of years for me to do that. Um, but it was all done in this room, and uh, the room that we're in now is my, uh, I call it my home studio, my atelier, um, where I do most of my writing and creating and many mixes. Uh, I'm working presently on a project called uh, Hog Fever, an ear movie, and uh, it is a uh, sort of like a 50s radio show on steroids, and it stars Terrence Stamp, uh, the great British icon. Uh, it was written by uh, Richard LaPlante and adapted by Kevin Godley, who is directing it. And we're recording all the parts and doing the mixing here in my studio. It's a uh, two and a half hour um, uh, radio play, sort of, uh, which will be released in, uh, in digital format. And then it has an accompanying one hour long soundtrack album that is uh, interspersed throughout the play. So it's a wonderful project. This is where we do it all. And I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about my deep and lasting love for the Air 6 monitor system. 